Well, hey everyone, about the time that I was getting out of elementary school, my friends and I were totally into comic books. One guy was completely over the top with comics everywhere. His bedroom was covered with them. Now, he must have driven his family crazy, you know. I'm Andy Asher. I'm over here, at editor at the Bloomer Boomer, and I am pretty sure kids today would rather do uh, video games maybe than comic books, but, you know, comics have had such a huge influence on our lives. You know, just look at uh, Marvel Comics and all the spin-off motion pictures. Well, today we're going to talk to a guy, uh, none other than Vincent Zerzolo, who is one of the nation's leading comic book aficionados. Now, Vincent has appeared in dozens of programs to talk about it, and he loves comics, he loves the art form, and, uh, you know, buying and selling. We're going to talk to Vincent in just a moment, and dig into comic book history. But first, if you are new to Bloomer Boomer, you can learn more about our upcoming shows uh, in, along with in our newsletter, or you can connect with us on Facebook or on YouTube, um, you know, on Twitter, uh, at bloomerboomer.com, where we live stream everything. We're live streaming on all social media right now. And you can uh, like and follow us on your favorite social media to hear more about what's coming up. So in the meantime, we'll get started with Vincent Zerzolo, uh, one of the nation's leading comic book aficionados. But first, don't forget, I love marmalade. Well, Vincent, this is a good time to have you here. I really want to thank you. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Well, listen, comic books are, you know, they're like an escape from, uh, from reality, really. You know, we need a lot of that right now, don't we? Yeah. So for me, even as a kid, and uh, I guess especially nowadays with all the issues in the world and the coronavirus, uh, it's great to be able to escape to another world. Uh, filled with fantastic characters and artwork, where hopefully, usually, good triumphs over evil. And um, it is uh, something that I've always loved about comic books. The, escapes, the escapism part of it has been great. Um, it's also taught me about creativity. It's taught me about art. I've uh, improved my vocabulary as a student in school uh, by reading comic books, and it's meant uh, the world to me. Uh, not only because it's something that I do to earn a living, uh, design a lifestyle, but because uh, I think it's some of the great, greatest literature of our time. Yeah, yeah. Interesting way to put it. I, I like the literature part. You know, it's really interesting to hear how comic books uh, came to life, you know, back in the Depression, which is uh, kind of has a, some similar feelings to today in a way. Yeah, so the original comic books, the first comic books, were actually reprints of newspaper scripts. So they basically just said, hey, what if we take all these um, comic strips and put them into this comic book format and sell them for 10 cents a piece? And they were doing that. And they eventually started doing original types of content for the comic books. And eventually that led to the first superhero being Superman in Action Comics number one in 1938. Ah, oh, that uh, now what was a Marvel Comics or a um, uh, or DC Comics like back in the day? I picture, you know, an office uh, full of artists having a great time drawing. And uh, what is it like today? Uh, today well, for them. So, so here are the differences. I think back then, I'm not sure. I'm sure they had great camaraderie, and it was fun, but. Drawing comic books was just basically a way for a lot of these guys to put food on the table at home. So it wasn't a glamorous world that they lived in, and uh, most of them uh, toiled in obscurity. Uh, even even the creators of Superman, Siegel and Schuster, I believe one of them was a delivery guy boy in, in a later latest stage of his life, and it's really sad when you think about that. Um, uh, back in the day, everybody would work in one studio, and or they had a bullpen at Marvel. But nowadays people work remotely and oftentimes what happens is a penciler will uh, lay out his art on the computer and email the file over to an inker. The inker then prints out the blue lines and then inks over it. So you sometimes have two original pieces of art, the uh, pencils and the inks, which I think makes it a little bit complicated for uh, collectors today. Um, and then you, uh, but you still have some people who work in the traditional format, but I don't think 
anybody works inside a studio anymore, uh, or at least as far as I know. Uh, you know, in terms of like a, a, an organization of artists, um, because it's it's too difficult. I mean, you can have a you can want to work with a great artist in Europe or Asia. You don't need them to be in your studio. You do everything through uh, computers online. Yeah. Well, I want to get to uh, some of the, the viewer questions and our frequently asked questions, uh, but we can get to them in just a moment. But you know, uh, they say history repeats itself. I wonder if that's the case with comic books, or maybe it will be in the form of what we see today, these big mega motion pictures. What do you think? Um, I think comic books are here to stay. Um, I do believe that the format may change over time. Uh, digital uh, comic books are becoming more and more popular. However, I'll go by Stanley's old adage that comic books are like boobs. They're great to look at, but better to hold in your hands. <laughs> I love that. Listen, uh, Vince and I will be right back with your questions right in a moment. Okay, Vincent, I think that was a great way to make a transition here. And uh, this question comes from Dave, uh, and it says, how should I read comic books without damaging them? So uh, oftentimes what I'll tell people, actually, hold on, I'll, I'll grab, uh, I don't yeah, have, go for it. Have, uh, raw come yeah, here we go. We got a, we got a shot of your office there and everything like that. <laughs> so yeah, this is all original artwork on the walls, but here's a comic book. This is the first appearance of Swamp Thing, House of Secrets 92. Um, this is from 1971. And so if I'm reading a comic book, what I'll do is I have my hand out like this and I'll support the um, cover by, with my thumb and I will just gingerly go through the pages and comic books are quite resilient you just don't want to bend tear or crease anything but you can basically look at it like this and you're golden you can take a look what you don't want to do is you don't want to lay a comic book flat on the table because that puts a lot of stress on the spine and the spine is one of the areas you really don't want to put stress on. Um, this comic book, as you can see, has some wear along the spine, which to me means somebody had folded it back like that. Now, I would never do that to a comic book in high grade, but this comic already has all the stress lines here and crease marks that are um, show how it was handled. This was a comic book that was enjoyed and read and eventually sold for three cents at one point, which is crazy, but that's what happened. Yeah, good story. Um, you know, this one's from Adam, and he says, are there particular uh, Marvel or DC comic books uh, worth really big money? Yes, absolutely. Um, so for Marvel comics, the first thing you need to know, historically speaking, Marvel started out as Timely Comics in the 1940s, and then Timely eventually became Atlas, and Atlas eventually became Marvel Comics. So. Um, when you look back at Marvel Comics, Marvel Comics number one, which showcases the first appearance of Human Torch, the original Human Torch, who was an android, not the Human Torch from the Fantastic Four, and Submariner, who's the first anti-hero. Um, that comic book in super high grade is worth north of a million dollars. Uh, for DC Comics, my company has sold the most expensive comic book uh, ever, uh, which is Action Comics number one in 9.0 condition for over three million dollars. Uh, that's from 1938. The Marvel Comics is from 1940. Um, in terms of Silver Age comic books, comic books from the 1960s, we also hold the Guinness World Record for the most expensive Silver Age comic book being Amazing Fantasy 15, the first appearance of Spider-Man in CGC graded 9.6 condition, which I sold for $1.1 million about 10 years ago. Wow. You know, um, and, and this is from Bob. He wants to know about self-publishing. Is there anything that uh, he can do about that uh, if he wants to be a self-publisher of comic books? Well, the tricky part of self-publishing now is getting distribution. It's very difficult to get distribution, especially if you're doing a superhero comic book because Marvel and DC really have that market sewn up. However, now that DC is fragmented off from Marvel and is being distributed by, uh, not they're not being distributed, sorry, DC has uh, cut ties with Diamond Distribution which was a major distributor of all comic books. So there are there may be new avenues, but if as an independent publisher, you really have to make sure you have your budget put
put together and you have to figure out how you're going to get your comic book out there, whether you're going to do it online, whether you're going to do it digitally. It's not a very easy thing to do. I'm not saying you shouldn't pursue it. I'm saying you need to put together a very in-depth, sophisticated marketing plan to be able to get your comic book into the hands of readers. Can I get uh, get one more out of you? Um, and, sure. uh, yeah. Well, this one is kind of similar to that in a way. Uh, this is from Karen. Uh, how do I get a job uh, writing comic books? Well, you have to become a really, really good writer, and then you have to put your writing samples together, and then you have to go to the publishers and try out for different books. Most likely in the beginning, unless you're a very, very, very talented, you're, you're going to start off in a different area, possibly as an uh, assistant editor or a production assistant, something like that. Um, it's not really my area of expertise. Uh, I buy and sell vintage comic books and original comic art, other types of uh, pop culture uh, collectibles and memorabilia. However, I do um, uh, have friends who are in the publishing into the business, and, and I think to become a writer is, 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 uh, takes a lot of time and a lot of skill, and uh, you have to start small and build your way up or publish your own comic books. Good information. Hey, Vince will be right back and I'll let you know how you can uh, connect with him right after this. Hey, Vince, it has been great having you here. Uh, how can people get in touch with you to find out more about your uh, wisdom? So I have three different companies. MetropolisComics.com is the world's largest dealership for vintage comic books. We have over 150,000 comic books for sale. You can check us out at metropoliscomics.com. And our online auction and consignment site is comicconnects.com. Uh, we have an amazing event auction ending next week, over 3,000 items, including vintage comic books, movie props like Wolverine's Claws from the first X-Men movie, um, pulps from the 1920s to the 1940s, um, video games, uh, graded, water-graded video games, um, including Nintendo, Sega, and uh, Atari. Um, so that's ComicConnect.com. Our event auction is August 24th through the 28th. And we also have MetropolisGalleryNYC.com, which is the only gallery that is dedicated to comic and fantasy art. The only problem right now is because of the coronavirus, we are not open to the public. But we do have an incredible array of artwork for sale. And um, if you like listening to comic book interviews, I had my own radio show, which is still on called uh, ComicZoneRadio.com. With it, which has basically hundreds of different interviews with creators, artists, writers, collectors, historians, publishers, you name it, actors, directors, producers. Uh, we've got it all uh, from Frank Miller to John Byrne to Stan Lee. Uh, that's a really fun thing to, for people to listen to. It's all free. And so um, you can enjoy a variety of different things through my different brands. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed this interview. It's been my pleasure. And if you have comic books or any type of collectibles to sell, please give me a call at 800-229-METRO. That's 1-800-229-METRO. I am buying every day of the week and twice on Sunday. I love buying comic books, original comic art, video games. You name it, we'll buy it. It's in the realm of pop culture. So Fantastic. give us a call. Or give us a call. Fantastic. Hey, uh, Vincent Zerzolo, who is one of the nation's leading comic book aficionados and a lot more, as you just heard. Uh, you can find, find out more. And, and, and hey, Vincent, thanks a lot. I'm really, really glad you uh, found the time. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. I really enjoyed it. And uh, you can find out more on uh, on Facebook, YouTube, and at BloomerBoomer.com. And if you like this, uh, you know, please like us on Facebook and, and then, of course, follow us. And, of course, in the meantime, don't forget I love marmalade. <laughs>